Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, mysterious voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I have found in my travels. Today, I want to talk about a short story because it is Short Story Tuesday. Uh, it is also Black History Month, so I am once again highlighting a Black author that I have found or that I am re-experiencing because I've talked about this author on this channel before. Uh, today's short story is all about um, practice field day regiments and uh, the, the support of a family. I am referring to The Boy and the Bayonet by Paul Lawrence Dunbar, which was published in 1904. I've talked about Paul Lawrence Dunbar on this channel before. If you want a little bit more detail about who he was, go watch my video on The Scapegoat, a really high quality short story um, that is also by Dunbar, which is really, really good, I would say. Uh, but for those who don't know, just a little bit of explanation about Dunbar is that he is an, uh, a black author, uh, mainly known for his poetry and highly praised by the people of his time, including Frederick Douglass, as well as the New York Times. Uh, he is, is known for writing uh, about black families as well as the, the black experience, given that he lived in a time of Jim Crow. That, that's some aspect of, of the books that he wrote. Um, and he was also married to Alice Dunbar, who is a, um, she is a big name in her, in her own right. So quite the family that, that, uh, that he had there. Um, and again, I, I've, I've read his work before and I'm a big fan, but I do think I need to continue reading his work because I really like his writing. Um, it has a very flowing nature to it. Uh, and the things that he are, that the things that he's writing about are very interesting to me. Uh, so, um, I might read one of his novels down the road. Although I said that the last time I talked about him. So it's just, I, I got a big TBR. So eventually I'll, I'll get to his novels, but, uh, it might take some time. Uh, so anyway, without further ado, let's talk about The Boy and the Bayonet. I will do a summary, a little bit of analysis, and we will move on from there. So The Boy and the Bayonet focuses on Tom Harris, uh, or Bud as he's known by his family. Uh, Tom and his family are preparing for a field day sort of uh, ceremonial regiment um, exercise uh, that takes place in this military high school that he is apparently being being sent to uh, and might be graduating from or it just might be the end of the year. Uh, but Tom is very enthusiastic and very um, uh, confident in his company. He believes that his company, Company A, will will win the competition. Um, and uh, his family is is supportive as well. But they note that you know, like, don't don't be too confident, overconfident in this matter, or like you'll you'll mess up as as a result. Um, and indeed, when uh, when the companies go through their their actions and their motions, um, their marches and whatnot, Company A does have a number of errors, including shooting and just errors in marching. And Tom accidentally drops his bayonet, which for his part, like he he quickly makes up for and and just continues walking rather than grabbing it and and um, disrupting everyone else who's walking. But Tom is ashamed when that happens. Uh, it's an it's an error that shouldn't really happen, especially in a military exercise. And his family is 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 saddened on his part as well, as they believe this will ruin his company's chances of of winning. Uh, and indeed, another company wins the event for that day. And when Tom goes home, he feels very sad about everything. Uh, he doesn't really want to eat, although his mom kind of forces him to. And he notes that he doesn't really want to go back to school or even wear the uniform because he doesn't feel that he is worthy of it. But his mother makes him go to school the next day. And when he's there, an officer is giving a speech about what happened uh, in the um, in the day before, noting how uh, even if it wasn't for Tom, like the company would have still lost because they, they had made a number of errors. But he specifically goes out of his way to praise Tom because although he could have tried to grab his bayonet and continue, he was very consistent and walked forward. Uh, and that allowed the uh, the company to, to look a little bit smoother because if he had stopped, you know, things wouldn't, um, 
wouldn't have been so smooth. Things would have gotten disrupted. And so uh, the officer, you know, thanks Tom for doing that and shakes his hand, remarks that he's not wearing his uniform. And Tom says that he he felt ashamed. And the officer just notes he should never be ashamed to wear his uniform. And then so t- as the story ends, Tom goes home happy, uh, feeling very confident as his as his uh, family is happy that uh that he that something good was able to come out of this moment. In terms of analysis, there, there's a little bit worth talking about. This wasn't quite as complex as The Scapegoat, another one of his stories, which again, as I've noted before, I'm, I'm a really big fan of, but there is still something worth talking about here. And one of the ideas that, uh, that Dunbar is working with is disappointment and shame. Uh, specifically, Tom feels deeply upset about messing up on, on field day. Uh, like he went in very confident in himself and hopeful that his company was going to win, but uh, like he screwed up. And the worst part is he did this in front of an audience where everyone was able to see him drop his bayonet and and not perform the actions that he was supposed to perform to the best of his ability. There's a really good point where Dunbar is writing about all of this, uh, and allow me to read you the quote about that. To Bud, all of the rest of the contest was a horrid nightmare. He hardly knew when the three companies were marched back to receive the judge's decision. The applause that greeted Company B when the blue ribbons were penned on all the members' coats meant nothing to his ears. He had disgraced himself and his company. What would his mother and his little sister say? And there you get a very good quote about the shame that he's feeling. Like, he's he's not able to be in the moment because he's so focused on that one error that he made uh, and how everyone saw it and, like, what would his parents say or what would his family say when, when they saw that he was, you know, that he messed up that badly? Would they... Um, would they be just as unhappy with him as everyone else appears to be? And that that, that just fills him with an even, even greater sense of shame and, and sadness. And there might be even more of that because, um, like, this is this is like a military exercise. You know, the military uh, teaches you to act in a very specific way, to follow orders, and when you don't follow those orders, like, you you might feel a greater sense of shame because that's kind of been, you know, beaten into you um, or, like, uh, like, yelled at you and and drilled into you some sort of way. Uh, So he might be feeling an added sense of shame, not only from his family being there, but also from this happening in the middle of a a military um, exercise. Uh, and so you might wonder like, well, how, how do we get out of this? Like, how do we avoid or, or like solve the sense of shame that, uh, Tom is feeling in this story? And the answer is the praise that he receives from the officer, noting that, yeah, he did kind of mess up, but because he was able to continue forward and not let him, let it uh, affect the, the next motions that he did, not, not having to, you know, get out of line and, and, and get his bayonet and do all of that, uh, like because of that, like he he it, he was in uh, in addition to uh, a strong addition to the company, and uh, like it, it, it helped them not mess up as much as they could have. So in in, in the story, the shame is negated by by praise. Um, it's it's weird though how the the, the um like this the sense of shame and disappointment he feels isn't inwardly solved by him by understanding that that he needs to be praised by other people. Um, I feel like that's a that's a weakness of this story. I don't think Dunbar is trying to say anything about that, uh, but it is it is kind of noticeable and it does hinder the story in some way. Dunbar also seems to be talking about family in this story, specifically how uh, his mom and his little sister are proud to support Tom, uh, very eager to see what he's learned and and eager to see his, his the drills that he's doing on this field day. Uh, and Tom is, is thrilled that they're there as, as well. Uh, so you see Dunbar noting how family can be important to these particular individuals that, uh, that he is writing about. Uh, but there also seems to be that support, like family supports you even when things don't go so well for you. Uh, like when Tom is feeling in it, feeling extremely low, his mom is like, there will be other opportunities in the future for you to show off uh, during these drills and to uh, succeed where you haven't done so today. And uh, like, 
Like that doesn't necessarily help Tom, but Dunbar is showing that that family support doesn't simply stop when you aren't doing so well anymore, that it continues and it's it's unconditional, which is always, always nice. Uh, but there's something unrelated to that in this story that strikes me as particularly interesting because whenever I see the, um, the phrase little sister as it pertains to Tom's supposed sister, I see it in, in quotes and, um, it's possible that could have, could have been like a like a a, um, a post edition by someone else added, but I think Dunbar might be trying to say something with the fact that little sister is in quotes. Perhaps it's the case because we don't really see um, Tom's father in this story at all, um, as well as any other siblings. It's possible that the little sister in this story is is Tom's daughter. Uh, and the mother in the story is Tom's Tom's mother, and so Tom like Tom's wife or something like died during childbirth, and so now it's just his mom, Tom, and the and the and the daughter who they they're all pretending might be uh, might be his um, uh, daughter, which you know now that I think about it doesn't really make sense given that he's in high school, so you know not the best kind of um, analysis there. Uh, but it's, it's also possible, as as is the case in some black families, how um, like this could be a cousin or a niece or a nephew who's been orphaned, and the families took them in, and they've chosen to treat this 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 daughter or this this child as the daughter, as as Tom's little sister. It's it's not it doesn't add too much to story uh, to talk about it. Like it doesn't. It I don't think it's really that important to an analyze that aspect of the story. But it, it is in quotes a bunch, and I've never really seen anyone else do that except for Dunbar here and it's it's a very interesting and kind of out of the ordinary way to call this 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 young young child like little sister like what specifically is he saying there if you have any you know guesses let me know in the comments below it's always good to hear what other people think about this in, in stories anyway those are my thoughts on the boy and the bayonet by paul Lawrence dunbar it's a fine uh short story i don't feel that it's probably going to be the best of the month or even one that i particularly remember going forward but if you are interested in reading classic black authors uh you know you might check out paul Lawrence. Lawrence Dunbar and this short story here as well as The Scapegoat. I, I literally cannot say enough great things about The Scapegoat and how, how much of a fun and, and fascinating sort of uh, cultural critique is is um, sca the scapegoat, and I know I, I probably shouldn't spend all the time, you know, in 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 a, in a different video talking about the scapegoat, but maybe that that's an, uh, that's a comment uh, like a comment on the quality or the low quality of of this short story. So unfortunately, not a winner here, but still one worth talking about. Uh, if you have anything to say about the short story, or you just want to comment on my review here, do so below. Let's have a discussion about the boy and the bayonet otherwise don't forget to like share and subscribe or possibly join the discord if you want to you know find out more about similar authors or uh, continue the discussion about the stories that we're talking about right now um, and other than that i wish you the best of luck in your weird and field regiment travels farewell